Well, hello there and welcome to Goblin Valley State Park in southern Utah. This is just a absolute kind of fairyland of hoodoos and toadstool, mushroom looking rocks. Uh, and what's great about it is it's sort of on a, a human scale, right? You can actually wander around these things that aren't much taller than you and get very close to and uh, sort of intimate with this landscape. Just a really fantastic location here in South Central Utah. We'll explain a little bit about the geology here and then poke around a little bit and see what we can find. Uh, as you look at some of these interesting little landform features here, they're all occurring in this same reddish layer, uh, a unit known as the Entrada Formation which makes up the arches in Arches National Park. Now over near Moab at Arches National Park, the Entrada Formation is mainly sandstone, and so it's much more resistant to weathering uh, to form those big uh, arches and, and similar type features. Here, what we have is different layers of the formation. We can see that these cap rocks here are of one rock type, and then below them is a very crumbly, softer layer that sits underneath it. So we have these mudstones forming the pedestals or the bases uh, of these little hoodoos, and then this much more resistant sandstone, kind of a fine-grained sandstone, forming the, forming the cap rock that sits above it. Um, and so, from above, you can actually see that all these sandstones, which look kind of random and disorganized, actually do form a cohesive layer, uh, a traceable layer across the landscape. And as we head over here towards the cliffs, it's a little bit easier to see that these are actually continuous layers that we get here in the Entrada Formation. Um, so this is a Jurassic aged unit. It is just a little bit younger than the Navajo sandstone, which forms some of the big uh, buff colored cliffs you see at Zion or around Lake Powell or in some of the other locations. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn off this video segment and then take you further south here. There's some other valleys that have formed here and see if we can find some other interesting features. So these are all formed by differential weathering. The mudstones weathering out much more softly than the resistant sandstones above. The other processes going on here are the fractures that have formed in this formation have become zones where frost wedging, so freeze thaw actions in the rock or water erosion itself can exploit those and then isolate these individual little fins or pinnacles or little knobs of rock separately. You can see as we look down in the wash here that the, the wash is just utterly or nearly completely devoid of any sort of plant life. And so when the rain really comes and washes through here, that's what produces a lot of the erosion. There's a few patches of salt here forming the white little patches you see down here in the foreground. So we'll head down um, a little bit further down the valley here and see what we can find. But hopefully that was a nice little synopsis of how these little goblins in Goblin Valley form. Great place to bring kids. Um, and there's really no trails. You can just pretty much wander around and explore, you know, as long as you're responsible and uh, aren't trying to like push the rocks off you you're pretty much free to clamber and explore and scramble up uh, whatever you like as you explore this little landscape here so yeah so i think we'll head down this way uh, and then i'll do another little segment here as we get a little bit further and we'll see what we can find here at goblin valley Okay, I uh, lucky enough was able to make it up through the gullies to the top of the mesa here. So I'm standing on some grayish green mudstones and sandstones. And just behind me here, you can see the contact with, between the red 
Entrada Formation and the overlying formation, which is called the Curtis Formation. That's this greenish gray unit here. Um, looking off to the east, again, the hoodoos, the little cool shapes we see uh, weathered out in the Entrada Formation. Across the way, looking south, the really sharp contact between the Entrada and the Curtis Formation. Henry Mountains in the distance. Uh, and as we look back here towards the west, the next section of cliffs here is the uh, Somerville Formation. All of these units here are Jurassic in age. Um, over here, if we walk a little bit to the west, see all the cars over there? That's the parking area for uh, Goblin Valley. But on the ground in places up here are some red pieces of agate that have weathered out either from the Curtis Formation here. You can see a little bit of cross bedding in this sandstone. This is a marine unit. This is uh, represents the ocean coming back into this area. So the ocean flooding this area as the Jurassic Age seas were rising. But if we come down here along the ground, there's these really somewhat obvious reddish hard pieces of what I would call agate. Uh, essentially, it's a variety of, of chert, agate, chalcedony, flint. Um, yeah, so very similar to, to what you might find in other places. But agate's usually, I believe, a, a reddish color oftentimes. Um, and then looking back at the, the landscape I just came up through, which was kind of fun. That's the wash I came up there, and then it was a short little uh, kind of scramble to get up here. But looking down at the wonderful hoodoos and pinnacles and just fantastic shapes here in the Entrada Formation. Um, just spectacular. Uh, in the distance out here, you can see the, the buff or beige unit on either side of this butte. That's the Navajo Sandstone, and then from just past this butte is where all the rock layers start to tilt upwards to the west or down towards us towards the east and that, that forms a, a large fold or flexure in the landscape known as the San Rafael Swell. Very prominent landmark, more or less uh, in, in central or just slightly east uh, in southern Utah. Um, so we'll walk around a little bit more. Uh, we'll see what else we can find in here. Uh, but we made it up through the Entrada, Entrada Formation, up into the Curtis Formation, mainly these kind of coarse grained sands. Um, small cross bedding in here. Looks to be fairly quartz rich um, with a little bit of maybe a muddy unit below it. Looks like here it preserves some ripple marks. So again, this would be like a beach sand as these Jurassic Age seas about 160 to 150 million years ago were rising as the sea was uh, encroaching into this part of Utah from the north, from Canada. Uh, just a remarkable, remarkable story. Um, so what's so great about Southern Utah is there's just so many layers and each layer is a different environment, a different story, a different setting tectonically, geographically, uh, and it makes them all very distinct. We'll head over here for one last look to, I guess this is sort of the Northeast, down at some of the sort of sculpted hoodoos, cathedrals here at Goblin Valley. We'll just walk out to this point and then we'll do a little bit more exploring, so. Uh, beautiful it's a wondrous little landscape here on a beautiful day hope you're enjoying this and uh, i'll at least do one more video segment before signing off we'll see what else we can find here at goblin valley okay still here at goblin valley valley uh, state park working my way up one of the valley side canyons um and we can see here some of those really nice draperies of mud that coat the surface. Basically when they get rainstorms and flash floods, that 
uh, liquefies the mud to some degree and as it runs across the cliffs it just kind of coats them with the mud there so we'll go a little further up this little narrow gorge see what we can find there is no actual slot canyons by the strictest sense of the word at Goblin Valley although there's some nearby at the San Rafael Swell but you do get some of these narrow little zones where it feels a little bit like a slot canyon and the reason we don't have slot canyons here is uh, if you've watched any of my videos about how slot canyons form remember one of the ingredients for a slot canyon to form is having a rock type that's completely uniform like a sandstone that has all the same grain size throughout like the Navajo sandstone or some of the other uh, very pure um, sandstones we find in the Colorado Plateau and here in the Entrada Formation we've got different rock types throughout we have alternating mudstones and sandstones so that um, of course the mudstones are easier to erode so they'll tend to form wider valleys as they erode the sandstone's a little bit more resistant but it's not nearly as resistant as some of the more coarse grain sandstones we see elsewhere so that's why we have no true slot canyons here in Goblin Valley but nonetheless this is an uh, interesting labyrinth um, you'd think it'd be easy to get lost and I'm sure people have but most of the drainages head in this area head out to the east and once you get down to a low enough elevation you can see the parking area pretty nicely so we'll go up one more little pitch here up the sandstone we're getting close to the mesa again we can see the overlying grayish green Curtis formation so we're nearly up and through the top contact of the Entrada formation so just a great magical landscape so we'll go ahead and uh, conclude here give you a nice little look at the scenery one last time and thanks for joining me on this little journey through Goblin Valley State Park. As always, appreciate any support you can provide. There's a donate button on the banner at the top of the page, a thanks button near the bottom right of the video viewer, and then links under the description. So please be sure to like, share, subscribe, support with the effort I'm doing here to just educate and also bring some of these amazing landscapes to people that might not be able to visit otherwise. So have a great day and we'll see you next time from another geologically spectacular location.